Hi, I'm Mike Bellevue, and today I'm out at the West Shore Sportsman's Association to take care of another subscriber's request. I've had several requests to show how to sight in a muzzle-loading rifle, and that's what we're going to do today. Now, with most modern scoped rifles, a couple of clicks on the scope turret will get you where you need to go for sighting in. But with a muzzleloader, it's a little bit different. To adjust the fixed sights on a muzzleloader, you need to apply force and do some judicious metal removing. And that's what we're going to show you. Well, the first thing we're going to adjust it for is windage, side to side. So, to do that, I like to use a target with a good, strong vertical line on it. Uh, particularly because I don't know how low I'm going to be shooting on this. Uh, so I might need to extend that line down. But what, what I do, and you probably consider this overkill, is I set the target up on a plumb line, which I just make out of, somebody's doing double taps on the other range, uh, which I just make out of a heavy nut, piece of string, and uh, a push tack. And then I'll know that that, that that vertical line on my target is exactly straight up and down, so I can adjust my windage precisely. All right, for windage, I start sighting in at 13 yards. I know that's pretty close. So it's better to start close where you know you can get a good group and really see the target and get your windage nailed down. Then you can play with the other variables. This is the, uh, the Bucks County rifle that I rebarreled with a 40 caliber barrel. So I'll just take you through the loading process. I'm loading it with 40 grains of 3FG. Uh, 3FG Schutzen powder from Graffs. Show you the bottle here. Get out of the shadows. So, let's fill the measure up. It's hard to do this on camera without doing something dangerous. But so, 40 grains in. I'm using a 395 diameter round ball. And I'm using linen that is uh, lubed with my usual black powder lube, two-thirds beeswax. I'm sorry, two-thirds two lamb's tallow, one-third beeswax. And I'm afraid it's time to sharpen my patch knife, which is starting to really dull out on me. Send it down with a short starter. And I'm using a range rod with a muzzle protector on it. Which I prefer to use at the range. If I was in the woods, I would use my wooden ramrod. And it's down. Now all we have to do is prime. And I'll do that on the firing line. This gun is shooting almost perfectly for what you want when you're sighting in a muzzle loader. I ended up shooting a four shot group instead of a three shot group because what I found is, and with most of these small bores like 40s or 36s, they foul really fast. And with a dirty barrel, I was shooting over here, but if I swab between each shot, I was shooting right here. So I wanted to shoot a group swabbing between each shot. So, as you can see, we've got to move about oh, three quarters of an inch to get it dead center. So that's what we're gonna go play with right now. Okay, so we wanna drift the sight a little bit to the right. Now, three quarters of an inch is actually fairly significant at this range. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna make a reference line and I'm gonna use a metal scribe and I'm going to draw a line on here. Uh, 
Okay, now what I want to do is drift this a little bit past that line. So I'm going to just pull out a punch. Nothing scientific about this. I'm just going to tap it a little bit. Same token, I do have to move it. Okay, a little more. All right. I think I think that might do it. Now this is just trial and error. I'm going to go back, I'm going to shoot it again, see how close I get. And uh, if we've got to, we'll tap it over a little more. Or we'll tap it back, which we hope we don't have to do. Well, I made my first windage adjustment to the rear sight. I'm going to fire another three-shot group, see how we did. I'm about a ball width off. From where I want to be. I'm just going to tap it a little bit more and hopefully that's going to do the trick. Well we've moved the bench back to 25 yards now and now that we've got windage pretty much dialed in we'll start to work on elevation. Well the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tap the rear sight a little bit more to the left because I'm about an inch, inch and a half off. Now I don't want to go too far. That might be just a little bit too far. Let's see, where are we? All right, I'm going to try that. Then I've got to, uh, I got to bring. A point of impact up a couple of inches and that means I've got to file down the top of the front sight. So now we'll go back and give it another try. So we made our first adjustment at 25 yards and let's see how it groups now. Well, it's a good group. I only moved it a little bit. You can see the center was about here before. Moved it up to here, we got a long way to go. <clears throat> And I moved it not so much to the left. So that lets me know I can be a little more aggressive in my filing and my tapping for the next round. All right, well, you can see I've got three groups shot at 25 yards. Between each group, I go back and I make some adjustments to the sights, and I'm getting closer. So we just keep tapping and filing until we're where we need to be. Well, you can see my progression here from group one up to group five uh, from the 25 yard line. And you can see we filed the front sight down, raised the point of impact. And from there, I was just playing around with the uh, rear sight's drift adjustment and really I'm just bouncing on either side of the bullseye now. I don't think I can fine tune it any more than this. So this is what we're going to run with. Well, that's the whole process. This is how I sight in a muzzle loading rifle. And uh, even though I'm not hitting it dead on, I think this will still do for squirrel hunting.